In this video I'm going to paint the chariot and this will be the last video for this particular miniature. I started off with rust grey first and the reason why I chose to use rust grey is I wanted a slight variance, a difference between the chariot itself and the miniature which will be mounted onto the chariot. And once a couple of coats were applied of the rust grey, next I used Ulfuran grey and as you can see I'm using this on the some of the edges to give some highlights to the edges. And then next I'm using a mix of Lamia medium and Mechanica standard grey. So once the highlights have um, had time to dry, this goes in between the initial line for the author and grey and separates the left and the right side giving a nice dark line in between the two so this is the easiest way to paint the edges for details and I added even more Lamia medium to the mechanical standard grey to cover the lower part of the chariot and again the reason why I'm doing this is trying to darken it down a bit so when the miniature sits on the inside of the chariot, it helps to give a level of distinction between the two pieces. Just to point out, you'll notice that one of the walls is actually missing off of the miniature. And that's because there was a slight air bubble in what would be the metal rod that would connect to the wolf. And the weight of the wolf then broke it because of the air bubble inside. But this can be easily fixed. Anyway, back to the miniature itself. The next coat I've been applying is Fenrisian Grey. And I'm using this primarily on the flat topmost surfaces. And you'll probably want two coats just to make it a good solid coat. And it's not a hugely lighter colour than the previous colour, but it just adds a little bit of extra uh, light where light would hit the parts of the miniature. Ulfur and grey has been used again to pick out the edges and those those nice sharp Ulfur and grey has been used again to pick out those nice sharp edges. I know on the official miniature this entire area is actually painted with a gold colour. However, for myself I've chose to use corn red and the reason why I'm doing this is this red looks a lot darker than gold and it helps to give a bit of contrast between the general brightness of the miniature and makes it somewhat darker. So I started off with the corn red. Afterwards, the Bugman Glow was applied, but you want to apply it more as a dry brush rather than a solid coat of paint, just so you pick out the utmost areas. And also, well, I used the author and grey previously and I would cover the recesses in such a way I'd cover both the left and the right of a recess. I've done the same principle here with the shields in the areas where you've got some recesses on the shields. And once these areas have had time to dry, I've used Carabao Crimson as a wash to cover the whole area. And it helps to tone them down a bit further so they're just slightly darker. For the metallics on this miniature I felt it's quite important to try and tone the miniature down and give it some darkness. So I started off with lead belcher first and then I used iron breaker just to pick out the edges to give it a bit of a highlight. And once this was dry null oil was applied onto all of the metallic areas and this really darkens them down and then lastly a very small amount of rune fang steel was applied onto the very tips of some of the more prominent more sharper areas of the metallics just to show that slight light reflection for the exhaust i've done a video before on painting the exhaust and this is also a great way of painting weapons which are 
energy or heat based as well but beans have already done this video i will leave a link in the description if you want to check that out and yet more metallics only this time it's gold so i started off with balthazar gold and afterwards i use ulric armor gold and some of these areas are quite flat pieces where areas like the wolf head on the front of the chariot because of the detail on it it's best to use the side of your brush so you can just pick out the details and that makes it nice and easy for you now for the monitors buttons and these these nobular parts at the bottom of the chariot which i'm presuming are to be lights maybe i'm wrong however for the two screens initially i used war boss green and then on one side i used phalanx yellow to painting three lines and then a few little blips to indicate um, where the potential targets are and on the opposite side after the green i use a small amount of orange then a small amount of red to indicate the warning sign on it and afterwards a very small line with avid and black to indicate the the marker and once the screen which is for the radar has had time to dry hex wraith flame was applied onto the topmost area to indicate how the bottom of the screen is brighter than the top and for the lights on the underside i used the war boss screen and then i used a couple of coats of the hex ray flame for the various buttons that are next to the the monitors i wanted to do them in two different colors to make them stand out so for the green ones then recent gray was applied first and for the red ones up shafty bone was applied once the paint is dry next i basically put a shade over the initial color instead of using a paint and then you give it time to dry and then for the buttons the monitors and also the lights on the underside of the miniature and also i've ended up with a green light on the right hand side and a red light on the left where the small fins are and these areas again as well as the others had a gloss varnish applied over the areas to make them slightly shiny and give them that glass like look if you like the video remember to subscribe click the notification bell and also share the video with your friends